is giving the energy uh, about minus seven point three kilocalories. So minus seven point three kilocalories amount of energy is given by uh, is given by whom? So either you write kilocalories completely or kilojoules. You write so you know how to convert calories into joules and joules into kilocalories, right? So the ATP is responsible for giving the energy. So we know very well the ATP. Um, if it is broken, you are getting ADP plus inorganic phosphate. You are getting ADP plus inorganic phosphate, right? When the ATP is broken, you are getting ADP plus inorganic phosphate, right? Um, ADP stands for adenosine dinucleotide phosphate. Right? This PA indicates inorganic phosphate. Right? So you're getting how much amount of energy? It means you're getting minus 7.3 kilocalories. Minus 7.3 kilocalories we are getting. Right? So when the ADP is broken into ADP and inorganic phosphate, you're getting what? Minus 7.3 kilocalories amount of energy. Right? So if I need to convert these kilocalories, you know how to, why? Because in the CBC board exam, sometimes they will give kilocalories and then they will ask you to calculate the kilojoules. You need to multiply with 4.18 kilojoules. Okay, 4.18, whatever you're multiplying, you will be getting the value. That value is nothing but what? Um, kilojoules value. Sometimes they will give kilojoules value. They will ask you to calculate kilocalories. Sometimes they will uh, give the number of ATP and then they will ask you to calculate what is the net ATP produced. Okay, so like this, a lot of mathematical biology questions possibilities are much more in the case of energy flow right so now uh, we are entering into the next important energy flow in the energy flow within the ecosystem the sun stands as a primary source of energy with the expectation of deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem um, okay here of the solar radiation, 50 percentage of the photosynthetic radiation. That means only the two percentage of the total radiation is called a photosynthetic active radiation, right? So in the total sunlight exposure, only the two percentage is used as the energy source, is used as an energy source. So only the two percentage is used as an energy source. That is a message we need to understand. Right, so now what we need to uh, do in this particular area, the sun stands as a primary source of energy. Sun stands as a primary source of energy. So primary source of energy in the sense it gives uh, energy with the photon. That photon energy is captured by the plant chloroplast to make the starch. If I need to do the starch synthesis, being a plant, I need to have the energy which is imparted by photon. So energy of the photon energy of the photon right so now we are coming for the next basic information is energy flow the energy trans the energy is getting transferred in a unidirectional way the energy is getting transferred in a unidirectional way that means uh, so from one plant it is going to the herbivorous animal herbivorous animal to snakes and then snake to eagle snakes to eagle so this is the way you are remembering the concept in your mind right so the energy flow is happening in the unidirectional way. Unidirectional way. The energy flow is happening in the unidirectional way. So we already told to you, unidirectional way of energy flow. Unidirectional way of energy flow, right? Now, uh, what we need to <clears throat> understand in the unidirectional way of energy flow
the plant is taken by the herbivorous animal herbivorous animals are eaten by the snakes snakes are taken by the eagle there is no reverse flow of energy that is the reason why we are saying the unidirectional flow of energy is kept under the first law of thermodynamics okay which conserves energy this aligns with the uh, energy we all know very well in the lower grade okay thermodynamics first law is not given here but i am saying for you energy neither created nor be destroyed but transfer from one form to another form that particular uh, concept uh, is reflected in the unidirectional energy flow which will be asked in number of time um, so be very careful with that how to implement the physics concept in the energy flow ecosystem is also governed by the second law of thermodynamics we were talking about the second law of thermodynamics requires continuous supply of the energy to create a molecule so continuous supply of the energy to create the molecule needs countering the natural tendency towards the disorders towards the disorders so uh, why because if there is a distraction in the energy flow if there is a distraction in the energy flow to the plant if there is a distraction in the energy flow to the plant what happens is um we can't uh, maintain the primary consumer and we can't maintain the secondary consumer so primary consumer and secondary consumer we can't maintain appropriately why because uh, the uh, plant is not available in a proper concentration so there is a reason why the primary consumer we used to represent as c's primary consumer secondary consumer so the primary consumer secondary consumer concept we discussed with you in detail um, and now uh, when we are discussing about the plant is taking the energy of the photon not of the same quality of the different quality why because uh, for example i am a maple plant of canada so i will take the light of different quality i will take the light of different quality and quantity right so depending upon the uh, plant color depending upon the place where i am living the plant takes the energy of different photon energy the plant takes the photon energy of different quality right so now if we are talking about we discuss the decomposers uh, in detail leaching cell we already discussed in detail right okay now we are in energy flow in energy flow uh, i told ab about the atp concept um and then i told about the primary productivity concept and secondary productivity concept kilo calories concept kilo joules concept and then now uh, we are entering into the next important uh, concept is energy flow in energy flow uh what we need to understand is um can you see the diagram a little bit more uh, more properly in the sense uh, uh, a little bit with the high visual quality um, can you see this so the primary consumer is seen by secondary consumer is seen by tertiary consumer so tertiary consumer secondary consumer and primary consumer loses the heat loses the heat right so uh, by metabolism by metabolism so there is a reason why we are using 10% energy gain law why we are using 10 percentage energy gain law we know very well right so 10 percentage energy gain law we told n number of time to you so in addition to all the things we need to understand uh, if the plant uh, coming under the productivity the plant are producers right primary producers if the plant is dying or if one particular animal is dying so the trapped energy is getting uh, lost for example so i am a rabbit i ate the plant uh, i died so the energy whatever i obtained from the plant is not getting transferred to the next animal so vultures of course uh, those who are eating dead animals will be eating the dead animals but if you are talking about uh, the primary consumers and secondary consumers uh, are not getting the producers okay for example the plant is dying the plant is dying uh, the plant dead plants are eaten by the herbivorous animal not a problem okay for example the if we're talking about dead animals like rabbit dead animals like snakes uh, if it is dying um, or 
it is getting damaged with the microorganism so then obviously it will be not taken by the other animals why because because of the plenty of microorganism infection in that particular uh, primary consumer like uh, the rabbit like this we already narrated for you right not only rabbit not only dog not only uh, the chimpanzee apes are also eaten by the lion and tiger right so uh, these are all the issues uh, we already told for you in this place now we are coming for the energy flow so primary consumer secondary consumer all this information we be given in a beautiful flow chart uh, without naming why because you will uh, listen very seriously right if you're talking about the each and every species are taking the energy from the multiple resources for example uh, if uh, i am a um, snake i can eat the frog also i can eat the bird also i can eat the insects also so i can eat the parrot also so mouse also so i am in the multiple uh, food right so i can choose which one is better right so now we are coming for the next phase of explanation uh, i told about the primary consumer and i told about the secondary consumer right um in detail for you so any one of you having any doubt in this place please let me know if you're not having doubt not a problem so we'll go to the next uh, concept um so tertiary consumers can you see this place here in each and every place uh, the producers are plant one and then second thing is uh, if you're talking about this okay this this and this so um so we can uh, say this the above one is a quaternary consumer quaternary consumer right now we are entering into um questions what is the primary source of energy in an ecosystem wind sun fossil fuel water sun is the primary energy fuel right so why the sun we already told you a number of time to you why the sun why the sun why the sun uh, because the sun uh, is giving the photon of different quality and quantity uh, the photon of different quality and quantity is very very important okay for various stuff plants that we already told you a number of time right so in addition to this uh, we know very well the consistent energy circulation consistent energy circulation what do you mean about consistent energy circulation uh, any one of you can say the consistent energy circulation no one okay i'll explain to you okay sun of various uh, photon sun of not various photon sun is having various photon um, content with uh, different quality and quantity right so photon of various quality okay photon of various quantity are used okay by the plant for example i am an alpine plant i required a different type of uh, sunlight energy so i am a date plant i am living in the desert so date plants are living at 40 degrees celsius okay if you are talking about alpine plants are living at 10 degrees celsius so the photon of different quality and quantity makes the alpine plant to grow much more better uh, whereas the date plant are grown much more better uh, in the case of the uh, desert area specifically in the case of gcc Uh, in this place the dates are growing much more better right so if you're talking about so the sun is the primary source the wind is not a source fossil fuel is not a source and water is not a source for the ecosystem so of course if you're talking about the sunlight and the water there are some plants which just photosynthesis which just photosynthesis um by utilizing the water by utilizing the water droplets by utilizing the water droplets can i give an example for that you are talking about the epiphyte plant is a plant that is growing with other plant and this epiphyte plant can take the water content of the atmosphere and this water content of the atmosphere is 
uh, very, very important water resource. So being epiphyte, without uh, the soil water, I can survive with the humidity. Um, okay, the humidity means atmospheric water I'll take, and then I'll survive very nicely, right? So atmospheric water I'll take, and then I'll survive very nicely. Like this, I conveyed the message for you. So these are the number of questions we discussed for you. So now if you're talking about the uh, which organism uh, harness the sun's radiant energy uh, to synthesize the food from simple inorganic material. Okay, of course, we know very well the autotroph is a beautiful example, right? So now, these are the number of questions we discussed with you all. Uh, 